Francis from Makers Muse started off a new hashtag 3D printing on YouTube after the last one he did in 2015. And I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole to check out what kind of channels there were at that point. This is what the 3D printing landscape looked like back then. And I'm going to be updating this one, which is the 2024 edition. And I'll probably upload it at some point somewhere. The challenge works as follows. Answer the five different questions, upload your either video or just questions if you don't make videos in the comments, put hashtag 3D printing on YouTube on the title or the description and you're in. At the end of this video, I'm going to tag two other channels that I really enjoy and that was a hard call to make because there's so many that are really cool. If you're new here, hi, I'm Bridget. I 3D print and design modular fashion and fabric. And I teach on this channel how you can create any type of TPU fabric, how to make it modular, how to then weave them together and how to create awesome garments, even if you have the cheapest 3D printer on the market. First question, when did you first hear about 3D printing? Here. I think that is probably quite a while ago. I would say it's probably when Iris van Herpe first started 3D printing fashion. And in 2012, I went to her first solo exhibition and took that picture. Um, it was the only picture I could still find on my computer. And this is not even one of her 3D printed dresses. This one's actually from the collection just before she started using 3D printing as a technology. But in that exhibition, there were her 3D printed pieces as well. I would say that's probably the earliest where it caught my attention. The second question, what is the first thing you 3D printed? I think for most people, the answer would probably be a Benchy, but I don't think I've ever 3D printed a Benchy. No, that's not true. Actually, I did 3D print a Benchy. Okay, I had to dig for this for a little bit. So this is the first thing I printed on my own printer and it wasn't really going all that well. So I was like, maybe I should print a bench sheet to figure out the settings. And then whilst this, this is literally, this is how far I got with my benches. So I started doing the benches, started calibrating and somehow it got worse rather than better. And I was like, this probably isn't the way to do this because for me, I don't really care if I can print a Benchy because most of the stuff I print is usually flat. So I dropped the Benchy and went back to calibrating what I actually needed the 3D printer for. Yeah, that worked out. That never worked out. So as someone who does 3D printing, I've never successfully 3D printed a Benchy. Well, first for everything. But back to the question. The first thing I 3D printed was a red bra, this one. This was back in uni in 2017. And at that point I was looking at the best technology to create zero waste mass customized fashion, which is still very much at the core of what I'm doing now. I quite love what Ellie did with the second question. Question two, I'm changing up a bit. New question two, what's the most challenging 3D print you've done? So let's cheekily add that one in as well. The most challenging thing I have 3D printed by far is this project that I collaborated on with Sean. We decided to work with storm data and the idea was data from the storm would decide how the face would look. The length of the storm would be the height of the face. The weather conditions would like show as uh, interference if that makes sense, like spikiness, I guess, of the face. Finally, the diameter would be the wind speed. And so in our mind, you know, we were going to have at the start of the storm, the wind speed is low. And then as the storm gets bigger, you're going to have like more of the belly of the face. And then at some point, the storm is passed and you're going to end up like at a small diameter again. This is what it looked like in the end. Um, you can see a little bit like this is the the core of the storm, so to say, but overall the wind speed was very much the same and it didn't look 
anything like what we had in mind, which was a lot of fun about working with data. And the biggest challenge for this project is that at that point, the only thing I've ever printed with is TPU. People say that a TPU is really difficult to print with. They're saying similar things about nylon. So, you know, maybe that isn't too bad either. 3D printing with nylon is a huge challenge in its own. And I think the, the biggest challenge was that I didn't have a great printer. I only had one cheap artillery printer. It wasn't set up to have like an encasing or anything like that. Right. In my mind, this worked uh, differently. I started turning my coffee table into a case for the 3D printer. And then it would still warp. So I was like, okay, what else can I do? I put glue on the bill plate and I give it a brim. It would still warp. So then I was like, okay, maybe if I put double-sided sticky tape on the bill plate and a ginormous brim, maybe that will fit. And even then, it's like hard to believe, but even then it was still difficult to print. Not in time for the exhibition, but I did manage to print them in the end. But needless to say, I have not printed with this material after this project. And on a side note, if you're super interested in what I'm talking about with all of the data and how to create G-code, this is the book I'm using for that. This is literally me just fangirling because this book is amazing and the professors that wrote it are absolutely brilliant for sharing all of this information. So if you want to know more about it, check it out. And with that, it would be a win-win situation if you also decide to subscribe because that is the only way for me to continue making cool videos. Third question, do you view 3D printing as a hobby or just a tool and why? This one is totally obvious. Last week I went to a 3D printing conference and I met someone and he, he was like, we talk about 3D printing, right? And so he was asking me, oh, so, you know, if you're printing with TPU, you must be printing with such and such and such and such, and such nozzle. And up until this moment, I still have no idea what he was talking about. I'm not a mechanical engineer. I don't really care for like what all the different components are called, how I can make my machine faster, newer, better. As long as it's running, I'm happy. 3D printing for me is 100% a tool to enable my hobby, which is designing modular and parametric fashion. Question four, what is the best 3D printer? <laughs> this is such a challenging question because it depends very much on what it is that you're trying to make. And at this moment, the biggest challenge is that the printer I've been loving for the past two years is out of production, not being made anymore. I can't even fix the printer that's broken because the parts are just not being made anymore. So it is time for a new favorite and I've been working with the Snapmaker, which is amazing. I've been working with the Bamboo Labs, not ideal for TPU. I mean, they say you can't do it. So the fact that it works at all is already pretty great. And then there's three more printers behind me that I need to unbox and check. At that point, I'm also not going to be able to give like one best printer for 3D printing fashion because it depends on what kind of project you're planning to make, like bags, shoes, like printing on textile or the textile itself all kind of require a different printer and so there's no one best printer there's probably one best printer in every category but that will come after i've actually tested them and so at this point honestly i don't know number five what is your number one tip for beginners for a second i was thinking you know buy your own 3D printer as fast as possible. But actually, when I started 3D printing about five years ago, there was always, it was either a 3D printer that was in the uni or it was at a fab lab or a makerspace or, you know, one that I shared with my guy friends who were really into 3D printing and maintaining a 3D printer. So all of these situations, I never actually needed to maintain anything i could just press the button and be done with it so that was kind of my view of 3d printing until then and then in 2022 i finally bought my own 3d printer and i really changed the game like productivity completely skyrocketed but it also kind of stalled at some point because i didn't know anything about 3d printers i realized i would say get comfortable with failure and keep in mind that if you're buying this as a 
you know, I'm going to 3D print fashion. It's going to work out of the box. I don't really care about the technology. I just want to make my art. There's no way that you can go without learning more about 3D printers. It just, it, it will become really hard unless you don't have your own printers. So in this case, it is kind of part of the hobby to learn a little bit more about how do I maintain them? How do I make them better? How do I keep the filament dry? And what, like there's, there's just more elements to it. But even though before I was saying that this is 100% a tool, it kind of is a hobby a little bit as well. So who am I going to tag next? And honestly, this was such a difficult decision to make because there is so many cool channels, obviously on fashion as well as on general stuff. For the first tag, I'm going to tag Crisia from Soup Printed, my niche neighbor. She does a little bit of everything. She 3D prints shoes, 3D prints on textile, the textile itself, as well as bags, as well as pretty much anything and everything. And I really love like how she comes up with new creative ways to 3D print fashion. We met back in 2022 during the Dutch Design Week and we talked about a lot of things, but the five questions here are actually not something we talked about. So I'm super curious to hear your responses to these five questions. Next channel is a little bit my guilty pleasure, I guess, which is the play conveyor. I really resonate with his, I can solve this problem for a couple cents mentality and then spends like hours 3D modeling probably. But 3D printing really, you can use it to solve problems. And I think that element I really like about his channel. I think his designs are fun, but as a content creator, what I admire most is his video editing and his like storytelling style. It is absolutely hilarious. So I kind of have high expectations how he's going to answer these five questions within his style. Big thank you to the Patreons that are supporting this channel because that is why I can do what I can do. And if you're interested in this top, it is 3D printed. Ha <laughs> ha